It's draft time. Draft. There we go, baby. Let's get it started. And we are going to kick things off with a pretty big bang because you guys already know. We are about to take Dion Boyd. We know he's a top five selection. Ladies and gentlemen, well, mostly just gentlemen. I've seen my statistics. It's pretty much all, all dudes. But anyway, welcome to my new franchise. First episode of the Madden 25 series and... You guys have spoken, and if you didn't vote, that's your fault. But you guys have all decided that we are going to be rolling with the Carolina Panthers. We are here with the Panthers. This team has been through a lot, and that is saying very little. This team has gone from a once respected franchise with Super Bowl aspirations, led by Cam Newton, to a team just trying not to, like, I don't know, taken out of the league because of their horrible play. And I feel bad for the Carolina Panthers fa uh, fan base. I feel bad for the players that are going through all this because it seems like there is just a lot of divide in Carolina, not just in the locker room, but like upper management, ownership, all everything in between. So we are gonna try and restore this franchise to not its old glory days, but even better. We are gonna turn them into a contender. We're gonna turn them into a championship team. And we are gonna start here. And honestly, I don't even wanna waste time. Like, yes, we could sit here and watch all of these games, but we suck. <laughs> like, we suck, right? I simmed already to week three. I have all the matchups up until week three, the same exact outcomes, despite the stats. Obviously I can't recreate the stats, but Win loss for every team is the same up to week three for the entire league. And um, we are just going to move on. We are going to get through the season. We are chalking the first season up to an absolute loss because it is that. We are ranked 30th, 32nd, 31st, 32nd, 31st, 31st. Dead last almost in every statistical category. Not a single bright spot. So I don't see any reason to waste any time. So what we're going to do in this episode, we are going to get through the season and we are going to do an off season. And we are gonna kick things off after the off season, okay? So this one is going to be the first off season of the Panthers franchise. And then we'll kick things off with a new team with a new look come next season. There's not a lot of introduction that has to be done with some of the players on this team, but we're gonna go over them anyway. Bryce Young and Andy Dalton, the red rifle. Well, I'm pretty sure I'll probably keep Dalton as a starter for the rest of the season because if, he doesn't retire and we can keep him on the roster maybe it slows down his regression a little bit right and he's a mentor quarterback we want to make sure that he's he's good for us i don't know what we're going to do with bryce young the easy answer would be i could very quickly trade this guy away okay <laughs> dang man even madden knows oh boy that is rough well, I was going to make a joke about just trading Bryce Young away for a bunch of stuff because Madden always just lets you trade, you know, pieces for a lot of draft picks and whatnot. But the game made the joke for me. Not a single team wants Bryce Young. Not a single offer from any team. Ouch. What I was going to say is I could trade him for a bunch of picks normally. But we're not gonna do that. That's the cheese way. And you guys know that's not how I play my franchise. I don't have progression or regression sliders set up yet. I wanna sort of see it for a season and then change it based off of what I see. If you guys have any recommendations for good XP sliders, please let me know down below because I, I haven't looked into them much. I don't see too much out there on Operation Sports Forum and the normal spots that I look, not saying that they're not there. I just, I have not seen them personally. So I'm not 100% sure which route I should take on them. I do know that they did up the progression to some degree for younger players, and they did make regression a lot worse for some of the older players, which I, I think I'm gonna like. So that's why I don't wanna tweak things too much right now. At running back, I feel like right out of the gate, we are gonna lean on Jonathan Brooks. In week three here, he is back from injury. I have him set as the starter. And I, I want to see if he can turn into a legitimate every down back. I think he, he's got the build for it. Six foot, 216. He's already an 80 overall. He's only 21 years old. I want to see if Brooks can be that guy for Carolina. I did make a couple of signings. Like one is Braden Willis. Uh, he was a free agent tight end that I just moved to fullback because there was no fullbacks in free agency at all. 
And he ended up being a 69 overall. Uh, 6'4", 240, decent speed. Um, he was like a 60 overall as a tight end, but when I moved him to fullback, he jumped to a 69. So like, I'm going to take that. Wide receiver is where things start to get a little hairy, okay? I like Deontay Johnson. I think he's a great receiver. He also is costing us $10 million against the cap. And as you can see as the top right, our cap space is in a horrible situation with only $1.39 million available and a $46.6 million cap penalty. I suppose why not just stay on the salaries page here? So yeah, I, I don't know if I'm going to keep Johnson. I highly doubt he would want to re-sign here. I wouldn't if I was him. He's 28. He's got a few good years left of, in the league, of course. Why would you want to play for this dumpster fire? And that's what we are right now. And that's just that's just the truth of the matter. You know, in order to fix a problem, you have to admit that there is one, right? And that's what we're doing. We are a dumpster fire and we need to change completely. We also don't have a lot of draft capital because, well, <laughs> yeah, if you if you know, Carolina just did some dumb things, right? The, here's a list of the draft picks that have been lost over the last few years to invest in Bryce Young that are now pretty much all for nothing. So what I'm thinking is maybe we try to do like a mid-season trade with some players that are just, they're not gonna be here long-term. They can help us free up a little bit of cap space so we can try and gear up for a huge off season because I wanna completely adjust this team. Like I, I wanna honestly maybe turn over like, I would say 35 to 45% of this roster just this off season. This is a huge first step. Tight end is gonna be one of the areas that we need to search at because we really don't have a number one. Ian Thomas has been reliable, but I feel like he's not a true number one. Same with Tommy Tremble. There is quite a bit of intrigue for me with Jatavian Sanders. Rookie, 68 overall. He's a big guy. I have him as one of the focus players. I want to see what we can make him into. He might be somebody that we can rely on, but he's got a long way to go. The line, we are actually in a pretty good spot for. We really won't have to do a whole lot of complete overhaul of the line. We have Equano here. He's going to be locked up long term for sure. Um, we have Damian Lewis. I don't know what this contract is. Maybe Madden just sucks, but Damian Lewis has a humongous contract and Madden has this dude as a 76. So we are sort of stuck with some of these bigger contracts that they gave out that I just don't understand at all. Um, we also have a few guys that are going to be up on contracts soon. Uh, Robert Hunt. He's getting a, a massive contract, 20 million a year for a 28 year old guard. Who signed off on this? Who? Like, are we, are we serious? We, we, 83 overall, 28 years old. He does have star, but I mean, that is, that is crazy. 21 million a year. And that's at the lowest amount. I mean, it's gonna go up. Look at this. 24 million, 23, like that's crazy. I really need to know who signed off on this. That's in insane, but we do have a right guard. You know, he's just expensive. We also have Taylor Moten. He's at 30 million a year. So you mean to tell me we have uh, a total of about $50 million of our 260 million cap tied up with a 30 year old right tackle and a 28 year old right guard. Going over the defense, there's not a lot of promise right here. Uh, there's just, there's not a lot of players where we're paying Ashawn Robinson a lot of money. He's got a three-year deal, um, eight, 10 million a year. We have Derek Brown who is hurt. He's our, our lone bright spot. And of course he he's getting paid less. Okay, guys, this is what I'm talking about. This is insane. He's almost getting paid less than, he is getting paid less than Taylor Moten. Derek Brown is getting paid less than Taylor Moten for the next four or five years. That is, that's insane. I didn't realize how bad the, the finances were with this team. Uh, Jaden Crumedy, um, I think he is one of the younger players on the team. I didn't forgive me. I don't know every player. Okay, 24 year old rookie. A little bit old for a rookie, but hey, okay, 6'4, 301. I am considering adjusting this defense. I don't know if I'm going to do it quite yet, but I envision a 4 3 defense. I, I do. Um, I just feel like we have better players for that, right? We have Derek Brown who could slide inside and be probably one of the best defensive tackles in the league. Um, we also have Shy Tuttle. We have Ashawn Robinson, who I feel like could play a really good three technique. 
And then at outside linebacker, we have Clowney who could slide down on the line. Harris could slide down on the line. DJ Wanham, he, his natural position was on the line. Um, DJ Johnson. And then we only have a couple of good linebackers, which is Shaq Thompson, Josie Jewell, and Trevin Wallace, who I'm really excited to get on the field. And if we switch to a 4-3, I could get him on the field right now and have these three be our starting linebackers. One of the players I signed was Siaki Ika. Um, I think I said his name right. He was a guy in free agency that I found. Um, I stole him. I think actually I took him from a practice squad. Uh, but he's got some really big upside. He's 23 years old, 66 overall. He's a big guy. So we are going to rely on some growth here from some of these younger players. But, you know, looking through this team, there really isn't a lot of super young talent, even at the lower overall levels. The secondary has a few guys, Shaw Smith Wade. I have him put in for uh, one of the focus players as well. Uh, we brought on DJ James and IU Blue Kelly from free agency. We also have Shamir Bartholomew. Um, a few like middle of the road average players like Mike Jackson, Dane Jackson, Lonnie Johnson Jr., who I thought was a safety, but I guess is a corner. JC Horn is, I believe, hurt right now, but we have at least one corner. We have our number one corner, but we have to fill this out. Whether that's going to be one of these young guys that are on the team or we have to go out and find one. Um, in the secondary, Jordan Fuller is going to be one of our our bright spots in the secondary him and horn are really our best options and then we also have xavier woods who is 29 82 overall but he's also coming to the end of his contract so a lot of work to do i also went ahead and got our draft stuff figured out obviously since we're in week three so what we're going to be focusing on is i we need almost everything right our wide receiver room our top three guys are getting up there um there's a lot of question marks on the guys below i am excited I am excited about the younger guys with Jonathan Mingo and Xavier Leggett, but I, I don't know what else we have there, right? So wide receiver is a very big strength. There's almost 30 guys in this class. I wanted to make sure we hit home on that. Um, so that is where our tier two is going to be. In the West, we're going to go safety, okay? There's not a lot of stuff in the West as per usual, but we do need safety help. Every one of our safeties outside of Jordan Fuller is like 29 years old. We need to get younger there. And we need to find more, you know, we just need more options. So we're gonna focus on safety there. We have outside linebackers, our secondary expertise in that area because there was a couple of guys that I would like to learn a little bit more about. Um, in the central region, we are going tight end. I mentioned before, we don't have a solidified tight end. There's like five or six guys in this area that sort of fit the mold of what I normally like to have in a tight end. Six, four, six, five area. Seem to be a little bit decent speed, not a big blocking guy. But we'll see what we have there, but that is what we're shooting for. I also have outside linebacker in this area too, because I'm really not sure what we're gonna do. If we're gonna have edge rushers or whatever, but we need linebackers. We need help in the front seven, just as much as we do in the secondary. Speaking of secondary, we're doubling down again. So here in the Northeast, we're going corner with a secondary on safety. And then same in the Southeast, we're going corner as well. The reason for that is Surprisingly, there wasn't a lot of stuff that we really needed in these areas and corner ended up being like the number one option for both. One of the main reasons that I didn't want to put quarterback down, even though it's our biggest need, is because there's only three guys that I would consider drafting. Maybe four. Aaron Hamill's here at, at round one to two. But for the most part, I try to stick to the top guys if I'm taking a quarterback, which I can just get fully unlocked now with the new way that they have the, the, per, the percentages spread out by adding these three guys as the focus players or the uh, the private workouts guys where we get the extra boost for just three players you pick. So I'll just do it on Dion Boyd, Eric Samuels, and Nicholas Moran. Moron? I don't think it's Moron. <laughs> Mor Moran? But anyway, I'll just put it on these three guys and we'll get all three of them unlocked and then we can do that for the different position as well. I didn't really address the running back position because I'm really excited about Brooks. I would still probably look later on in the draft for whether it's like for a, a big guy like Theo Judge or Ben Patton or just try to find a guy, you know, way down here, um, maybe for relief or whatever, because we really don't. I mean, we have running backs, but again, we don't have a lot of youth there. And as I mentioned, wide receivers, there are a lot of them. And I really don't know where I want to target them, but there is a good chunk of them in every area of the draft. Day three has a big chunk, round three to four, round two to three, and then of course our first round guys. And I, I do know that we're probably bringing in a receiver. 
I, I, at what point? I don't know. Obviously, I'm hoping we get number one pick and we're going to take one of these quarterbacks if one of them is top five worthy. And then at tight end, now there is a good chunk of them, but they, they're really spread out. So when I did central here, we have these four guys who are all in the mid round range, which is where I think I'll probably end up taking a tight end. I don't foresee me taking one super early. So we have Dalvin Ridley, Ahmad Hilton, Tyler Can, and George Webb all with projections. And then of course we have Ben Smith and Matthew Patterson as well. I'm more worried about the guys that actually have a projection within the, the seven rounds of the draft. And if we need to learn more about others, we'll we'll get to, we'll come to that if we if we need to. Uh, but right now, it's I have a feeling that we'll be able to find somebody in free agency to fill that role. And I'm usually pretty good with getting tight ends, like even in the draft. Like I can usually, you know, sift through the mess of what their their spreads are and all that, and say, like, okay, this guy is going to be pretty good, as you can with a lot of positions in in, in Madden. So I am not too concerned about that. Um, Northeast and Southeast, we're doing corners. And as you can see, there is a lot of corners here in Northeast and a lot of them here in the Southeast, a lot of round one guys. Now, I don't know if we're going to have a lot of top picks right now. We have the round one pick, which I'm assuming is going to be top five. I, I would not be shocked at all if we're top pick because this team is, is very bad, but we might also end up with an earlier second right now we're, we have the 51st pick, but a lot of the season still has yet to be played. We'll see where things go from here. Um, and for all we know, we might do some trading before then, and we'll see what that brings up. Uh, safeties as well. We did that in the West. There is a good chunk of four here. Casey McQueen, Levi Griffin, Nick Rowland, and Roderick McCain. And then at strong safety, we also have Nolan Curse, Daquan Boss, and Trayvon Gold. Oh, and Amani Wharton. So some good options here, in my opinion, for safeties in the like the later parts of the draft, not everything so early. The free safeties are going to be going a little bit earlier. But hey, I mean, if we find a guy that we just need to take for the, the, the back end of our defense, I mean, that's something we can look at. But there really wasn't a lot in the West or National or, or the West or Central or whatever. You guys know what I mean. So that is where we're at with the draft. I will be going over this. I, I probably won't be going over this too much more until we get to the draft because I'm really not going through it a lot. Like I'm going to simming this. Like I set this franchise up. It took me like a whole day to get everything, you know, uh, get everything simmed over to week three, make sure I had everything set up properly, all that sort of stuff. I, I it took me a while. So I doubt that I'm going to be deep diving this. We're just simming the season, stopping at the spots we need to stop at, maybe checking on a few things. And then we're getting to the off season. So this is going to be a video that really doesn't have a lot of action in it. It's going to be more building the team and getting a foundation started for this franchise run. So now let's go ahead and let's get over to the resigns area and we'll take a look at that, maybe make a few trades and then we'll get down to the simming. So first one that pops up to me is Deontay Johnson. His resign interest could not be lower and there is not a lot of money to be had. We only have 56 million thanks to some more uh, dead cap we're going to be eating. And I just don't think it would be wise to spend this much on an aging receiver that does not want to be here. We're going to have to overpay. So I'm going to try and find a trade for Deontay Johnson. All right. And I was able to find a trade after looking through everything. Deontay Johnson is a good, is a good receiver. He's 28 years old. He wants to go to a winner. The Lions, surprising to say this, they have playoff aspirations. They have championship aspirations. And right now the NFC North is up for grabs. So we are going to send Deontay Johnson along with a fourth round pick to the Lions in exchange for their upcoming second round pick. That is going to give us some more fire for the draft and also gets Deontay Johnson to a team that, well, can utilize him much better than we can right now. Shaq Thompson is another one that I'm, I'm sort of weary about. There's a little bit more interest there with him. He only wants a two-year contract. I just don't know if it makes sense to bring him. What I'm going to do is I am going to offer him Oh man, this is tough. This is really tough because Shaq Thompson has been in Carolina for so long. He is sort of the guy. And I don't want to, you know, just push every older guy out. You know what? No, no I think we're going to keep Shaq Thompson. I'm going to offer him this contract and see if he'll take it. Perfect. So we gave him a player friendly deal. Three years, 30 million. He's going to stay in, in town and help us form this team into something great. 
I tried negotiating with Austin Corbett on accidents when I was sort of just going through some stuff in the, uh, um, in the, like before going live and I, it wasn't a good one. I didn't intend to offer it to him and, but he does have good interests. I, I don't even know how I did it, but I, I hit a wrong button and whatnot, but regardless, we'll have to wait to see if he wants to resign. Um, Chuba Hubbard, he has high interest in resigning. I, I do believe that Brooks is the, the better running back for the long term and for the now. I would like to potentially keep him on the roster because, I mean, he is a quality option if something bad were to happen. Um, but I just don't know if I want to take him for four years. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen in two years. You know, we might be finding a really good running back and I want to, you know, move on and build them up. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to offer him a two-year deal for $10 million and see if he takes it. He has some high interest. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. Okay, so he really wants the long-term deal, and I just don't know if I can offer that to him right now. Xavier Woods, I don't think he wants to stay here. Yeah, he wants a Super Bowl chase. Highest offer. Well, we mean, the other two I think we're fine on, but the, the biggest impact right now is his Super Bowl chase, and it is, it is severely hurting his chance of coming back here. And honestly, I don't even know if it's worthwhile. Three years, 20 million for a going to be 30-year-old safety. Normal development that doesn't want to be here so which means we'll probably have to do a player friendly which is going to bring him up to four years i just i don't know if that's something that's worthwhile or not yeah i have to be a little picky because our money situation is not good right like it's it's not a good situation and mike jackson here i don't think i'm going to bring him back reason for it is if we're going to run into a situation where we need a 73 overall next year i'd rather do it with a 71 overall that's like 22 years old rather than a 28 year old that's 72 overall that makes sense you know what i mean and it just that's more money for us to save for potential free agency and and whatnot so we're gonna go past him tommy tremble i would like to bring tommy tremble back he's a younger guy we can use him to build up this tight end room he has like no interest in coming back though i'm gonna offer him a neutral and just see where his head is at okay yeah he's he's not feeling us right now so he might be out the door Lonnie Johnson, same situation. I don't see a point in bringing him back. Brady Christensen, he does not have much. Yeah, so boy, he does not want to come back here, does he? At all. Okay. Siaki Ika. Oh, we can't go with him yet. Uh, David Moore, I'm not bringing him back. Raheem Blackshear, probably not. Ian Thomas. He still wants three years. Not a bad tight end. I like having Ian Thomas. Let's make him an offer. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough getting guys to re-sign here and sign here for the next couple of seasons until we can turn some stuff around because these guys are sick of the, the way the Panthers have been handled and they are showing it in their, their re-sign interest. All right. Well, let's just start doing some simming because this is not going very well for us. So as you guys can see, we were just shy of the playoffs at two and fifteen. We're just right in there to the last week. We finished. Oh boy, look at this. Uh, we finished 30th. Oh, 23rd in pass yards. There we go. 32nd, 32nd, 31, 32. Um, our stats. Let's see what those ended up being. Bryce Young ended up finishing 25 touchdowns and 25 interceptions. That's a lot of interceptions. Okay, well. Jonathan Brooks ended up finishing with 3.6 yards of carry. He didn't have a very great season. Neither did Chuba Hubbard. Uh, receiving Jonathan Mingo. Look at that. Seven touchdowns over 1,000 yards. Uh, Xavier Leggett ended up finishing with four touchdowns, 629 yards, along with Ian Thomas. Okay, so some of the younger guys starting to play out. What about Jatavian Sanders? He ended up finishing 13 catches, 128 yards, and a touchdown. Not as much work as I anticipated. But once Ian Thomas was back, he sort of took back over the role and he ran with it. Defensively, Jack Thompson led the way for us. Tackles for loss was Jadavian Clowney. Sacks was Jadavian Clowney with four. Josie Jewell, three interceptions was the top. Okay, deflections, eight deflections for Xavier Woods. Okay, and that brings us to the off season. Uh, so, Juano, we could give him 15 million. But honestly, I feel like I feel like I should decline it and just re-sign him this upcoming season because 
if he ends up having a good season, right? And we don't re-sign him, he's going to be that much more expensive at the end of the year. That makes like that makes sense. He's going to like he'll have a whole year of progressing which could be, you know, 82, 83, whatever the case is. What if we have a good season or a halfway decent season? Maybe he gets a dev trade increase or something. Then his his price tag is gonna go up. But if I decline his option here and resign him right away in like week two, week three, whatever it is, I could get a long-term deal in place before he gets the extra drive for more money, if that makes sense. So I, I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna reject it, but not because we don't think he's worth it, because we're trying to save ourselves some money. And we only have 35 million to spend this offseason and we need it. Austin Corbett. This was the guy that I was I wanted to try to bring back. So we did a basic neutral deal for him. He did not like it. Um I don't know what else to try. I'm just gonna go here. Two years, 12 million. See if he takes that. I hope he does. Because I, I don't know what else we have really as a center option, but I'm trying to save us some money because we we don't have a lot of it. Okay, so we get Austin Corbett back. That's good. So that is one position not having to worry about. Chuba Hubbard. This was the one where I tried to give him a two-year deal. He did not go for it. Um, so two for nine. A neutral is three for 15, which is a little cheaper. He's got high interest, so I feel like if I do this neutral offer, he will easily take it. I'm wondering if I can at least save some money, right? Let's see if I can drop it down to like 2.3, 13.8. Just save ourselves a little bit of money. And okay, that made him mad. All right, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't have tried to do that. Xavier Woods, he does not want to come back to us, and I do not want to offer him a two-year contract. Definitely not a three year to try to get that interest level up higher. So we are going to take the loss on Xavier Woods. Justin Ross is somebody I just found in free agency to fill a roster spot. I don't plan on bringing him back. He is, his injury is way too low for me to feel comfortable having him on the team, especially with his toughness being down at like an 80, 81. So he is not coming back. Caillou Blue Kelly, I would love to bring him back. He is young. We can build him up a little bit. Um, he wants a three years. 8.4, I'm definitely willing to offer that, but he has no interest at all in playing for us. Oh boy. Okay, well, let's see if this player-friendly deal makes it work. No, Tommy Tremble, please, man. Come on, come on. No, he doesn't. I don't think anybody wants to play for us, and I, I mean that in the nicest way possible. DJ James, he does not want to either. Oh my gosh, we might lose like all of our players. Okay, S Siaki Ika, I want him back. Don't know why, I just, I feel like he's gonna be good. And he's gonna stay. I would like to have Christensen back. He's a really good depth piece on the offensive line, but I don't think he's gonna wanna stay. No, he's not, okay. Oh boy, so. <laughs> Does anybody want to stay with us? How about this lonely fullback? I didn't even stay for a player friendly deal to me before. Okay, there we go. So, hey, look at that. We might not have our young secondary pieces. We might not have our sixth lineman, if you will, but we do have a fullback. This is going to be a little bit harder than I thought, I think, with how bad of a season we had. Um, a lot of people do not like us right now. LeBron, Ray, I'm going to try to bring him back, but... Okay, there we go. So we have him back. Um, is there anybody else that's even worth trying at this point? No, not really. Maybe Andy Dalton, who is now down to a 66? Wow, he got hit hard. Oh, boy. Okay, he's going to stay. Perfect. Okay, so we have 41 million, but 22 of it is going to the rookies because we have a pretty good draft class right now. We do not have a penalty, but we need to see where all this money is going right now. So Taylor Moten is eating up a ton of money. So is Shy Tuttle. He is 6.5 against the cap. Um, I think we're going to end up parting ways with Shy Tuttle. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to. We're going to go ahead and release him into the free agency. Um, that's just a lot of money to be having on a backup D-tackle that's about to get overtaken by a different guy. 
Um, that opens up a few more million for us. Uh, this team is going to be a tough rebuild, guys. All right, guys. So looking through this free agency class, there is a lot of good names, but um, we, we, we really don't have enough money for them. So um, I would love to bring some of these playmakers in. I just, like I said, we just don't have the funds for it. A few veteran receivers. I am definitely seeing a lot more veterans in the free agency class. Not as many crazy names out here as we've seen in Madden's past. Um, but at some of the key positions where we're looking for, we really don't have many options. Defensive line is one of them. I ended up finding Draymond Jones, who I'm going to offer a contract to. I really hope we can land him. I am going after Bobby Brown the third because he's got the size that I'm looking for in a nose tackle. Um, since we're going to be running a 3-4 still. And a lot of guys just really aren't too interested in coming here. Um, Tier Tart would have been another option, but he's a little bit on the smaller side, so I don't know if he's really going to fit with our 3-4 front very well, as the nose tackle, that is. And then I did end up offering a contract to Brandon Steffens as well, because we definitely need some corner help. And then I found that the good old-fashioned Madden go-to Isaiah Simmons is in free agency and we just so happen to need a strong safety, so I offered him a contract. So this is the five that I am targeting right now. Brandon Stevens, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Draymond Jones, Isaiah Simmons, and Bobby Brown the third. So a lot of defensive playmakers and then Donovan Peoples-Jones because I, I just feel like we have a lot of question marks at wide receiver still. Um, so this is what we're going to do for our first negotiation period. So we're going to go ahead and hit the eval and see if, you know, if we get the guys that we're looking for. All right. So we are down to three. Did we get three? We did. Okay. So we end up getting Draymond Jones from Arizona, Isaiah Simmons and Brandon Stevens. So now secondary is pretty much okay for now. We have some beef on the defensive line, which we did not have before. Now we are just focusing on Donovan Peoples-Jones and Bobby Brown the third, which could make this a pretty good offseason for us, considering what we had to work with. And even just to get the money that we had for the last few signings, I ended up restructuring Robert Hunt's contract because it was just so massive. I'm also going to restructure Damian Lewis. That's going to give us another 3.74, which is going to open us up quite a bit for this year of free agency. That brings us back up to 8.6, which to me is a lot of money right now. So... I wanted to get Brevin Jordan. Let's go find him. Um, I'm going to offer him that. And I think we're the only one targeting. Yes, we are. Okay, so we can sort of get away with not giving a huge, huge contract. So we have tight end. I'm trying to hit on wide receiver here with Donovan Peoples-Jones. And then I just offered a contract to Anthony Nelson. It brings us down to literally like $100,000. But if we can bring in some more talent there, that would be huge. Oh, 200000 sorry. So now this is what our targets look like for this last wave. So again, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Bobby Brown the third. This is a big find for us, in my opinion, because we really don't have a big body in the middle. We have Derek Brown, but we already know what he is. He's more of that edge rusher, like pass rush type guy for us. He plays on the edge. He plays at the end. Um, I just want the guy that fits in the middle for us. And then Anthony Nelson to give us some more presence on the outside. And Brevin Jordan to tie up our tight end room for the time being. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the eval period again. And hopefully this screen is clear and we end up having a total of seven players we signed. Okay, so everybody made their choice except Brevin Jordan. So I'm hoping we have six players. Okay, so we got everybody. We got everybody we were looking at. And now it's just, can we get Brevin Jordan? And we got Brevin Jordan. There we go. It only took us three eval periods, but we got the seven guys we needed. And while I was hoping to have a bigger free agency class, I, I guess there was a lot more contracts on the books than I was initially anticipating. I thought we'd have a bigger payday once we got past the big 47 million cap penalty, but this is the best we could do. So honestly, though, I'm sort of happy with this. This definitely is going to shore up our secondary quite a bit between Stevens and Simmons. It's going to be a downgrade from Xavier Woods, but he's younger. And he can hold us over. Plus, he's very versatile. I can bring him down in the box if need be and have him play at linebacker. Um, Draymond Jones, this is going to go very well with Derek Brown on the other side. And now that we have Bobby Brown in the middle, I feel like even though it's not the best overall, we have a formidable D-line to start this series with. 
And then Anthony Nelson, I don't know if he'll get playing time or not, but we needed some, some actual help there because we really didn't have many options available. And then Brevin Jordan, sort of a guy that I just like, but he does add to our tight end room for the time being while we try and find our forever option at that position. So as I mentioned, I did the three top quarterbacks in the beginning of the season. Well, not the beginning, like week 13 for the uh, focus players. We are now where we can choose our three private workouts. And I'm trying to figure out who I want to do, but I wanted us to take a look here. Deion Boyd is the top quarterback and he is the best. He is a top five talent, 21 years old from Georgia. He is a strong arm. And you guys know I'm not a big fan of strong arms, but I feel like, I mean, he's the number one overall rated player projection wise in the draft. We know he's top five talent. And let's just look at his skills. I mean, he has got a lot of good stuff. He's even a really, he's even decently fast as a quarterback, but all sorts of A's. The only D's he has are carrying and juke move, but a ton of A's. Awareness is an A, play action and break sack is a B, throw on the run is a C, but the accuracies are all there for the most part. I really think that this might end up being, and he's got elite throw power. I feel like this has got to be our pick because obviously with, with with the way we finish, we do have the first overall pick. I feel like Deion Boyd has got to be the guy. Like Bryce Young is just not going to be the one that we're going to have moving forward, be our quarterback. So if we know that we're going to take Deion Boyd, right? 6'4", 225. I, I like everything about him. I hope that he works out. And obviously these other two guys, round two to three talents, so we know they're not going to be anywhere near as good. So there's really no discussion to be had about which quarterback to take. All right, so here is where we are going to be picking. So we have the first pick in the draft. Our two seconds fall at 43 and 46. So pick 11 and pick 15 or 14. Yeah, pick 11 and pick 14 in the second round. We have our third round, fourth round, fifth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So we can actually bring on a good chunk of players in this draft if we can really find the guys that we want to target the question is do we want to try and go after a receiver here in the second round or do we want to wait a little bit farther back so let's go back to the the draft class and let's just sort of see where things are sitting so i'm just going to go ahead and add Dion boyd to the top of my favorites list because i mean obviously he's uh he's going to be our first pick um and now looking at the receivers so we have to assume that by the time we get on the board, I highly doubt Jacoby Callaway is going to be available unless he really slips. But round one to two usually means somewhere between like you know, 22, 23 back to like 35, right? In that range is where you can expect a lot of these guys to go. We have Duran Overton down here who is a round two to three projection, but with round one to two talent. Uh, let's take a look at his player card. He's 6'5", 226. He's 21 years old. He's got elite strength, great speed, elite jumping. He's the second fastest wide receiver. He was the second fastest in the combine first at his pro day. And his skills, A run, well, I don't care about the run blocking, but B short, B spectacular, B medium, C release, which is something we can work on. B catching traffic, not a lot of A's. So I'm wondering if this is more of a physical type of player. Like, so he has all of the physical skills and maybe his intangibles is what we need to work on. But if he ends up falling to us in the second round, that would be a very, very good pick for us. I'm gonna add him to our favorites board as well. Uh, let's see, Matt Wise. Matt Wise is 6'2", 230, he's also 21. He is a lot slower. I feel like we have enough guys that are slower on the team. He is good with vert jump though. Yeah, I just, uh, no. If we're taking a receiver early, he's gotta be a game changer to me. Uh, let's go down the list. Uh, we have a couple of, like, a lot of these guys are just right where they should be. So we'll come across that if we need to. I'm trying to find, oh, and this is what I'm trying to find. Antoine Mobley, day three projection, round one to two talent. He is six foot, 188. He is 23, however, but he's not the fastest. He's got good speed. This is somebody I'm going to keep my eye on, though. I mean, yeah, he's not, you know, top of the line speed or nothing, but if you can get around one to two talent in the back end of the draft, I mean, that's something you have to, you have to consider. He's the second lowest receiver in the entire draft in terms of projection. 
And now let's look at the tight ends. So we have 65 on a few. We have 80 on the ones that we actually scouted. So there's not a lot of guys that we scouted. Let's let's get it down to the guys that we know we scouted. Here we go. So we have Ahmad Hilton, 6'4", 251. Then we have Dalvin Ridley. So he is really the sort of the, the breadwinner of the most of the tight end room. So I'm wondering if I want to add him to the private workouts to see if he is worth it and see where his talent falls. Because that is something that we need to look at as well. Like I mentioned, is tight end. We don't really have... A, a true number one. Let's also take a look at the corner back position. We have a couple of areas where we have them fully unlocked. And let's just see. Okay, so, ooh, ooh, Tremont Battle. Tremont Battle is round one to two, but he's top five talent. Oh boy. Okay, six, four, 190. I'm already sold. Second fastest corner. Elite acceleration, elite speed, elite change of direction. He's got A injury, B awareness, B man, C play rec, B zone, a well-rounded corner. There's no way he falls to us in the back in the mid set in the mid second. You know, like there's just this is not gonna happen. But that would be oh my god, that is a dream. Okay, we also do have another very solid option here in Terrell McGill who would okay this is okay so obviously not as good as battle right but if we could land somebody like overton and mcgill it with our two second round picks that would give us three round one or better talented players in this draft like right out of the gate well okay i know overton is round one to two but you know, you understand what I'm saying. It guarantees us three solid picks at three different positions of need. He's 21. He's not as fast, but he's darn close. And he's got a man. A little bit worse on play rec. A lot of stuff very, very similar. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We have another guy. Jordan Hillman. Round three to four. Round one talent. 22 years old. He's 6'4". He's right up there with, with speed as well. He doesn't have elite, like, uh, what's his name, Doug? Battle. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think we are about to have ourselves a huge draft. And then as outside rushers here, I didn't really do a whole lot of scouting on them because there just wasn't a big group of them anywhere. It's not a very strong class, at least depth-wise, for them. Not saying that there's not a couple of nice guys up top like Casey Curtis or... Tony Lindsay. Oh, actually, no. Lindsay falls down rounds three to four. <laughs> okay. Um, Alfonso Morales here, 6'5, 253. Jacquez Green, 6'2, 225. What kind of player is he? I think he, yeah, he's past coverage. 23. Not a big fan of that. He's got elite speed, excel, and change of direction, though. Okay. So he's somebody we definitely have to keep on our radar here. And I'm also going to add, where, did I add them all? I think I did. Yeah, I did. Okay. And I do feel like, well, let's check out Dalvin Ridley here. So Ridley is 6'5", 259. Okay. So his physicals, we don't know. He did not participate. I wonder if that means he's going to be really good or really bad. What is his injury? D or F? Oh, I'm going to add both of these guys to the board. I also wanted to check in on a running back or two at least one because we're going to need running backs jonathan brooks got hurt a few times throughout the sims last year i'm just not that in love with our options right now so theo judge was somebody that jumped out at me mid-round pick he's 6'1 228 he would give us the opposite of what brooks is i mean brooks is sort of an all-around guy but he's he definitely leans on the elusive side a lot more than he does brooks being elusive means that i liked having a power back um not sure b b b a to C, A to C, A, okay. So he's got he's got good ratings in the parts that he needs them. I think we're gonna do Theo Judge to see what his overall is. I would like to do a tight end here. I think I'm going to do a Mod Hilton. Yeah, or maybe we do Dalvin Ridley. Cause if, if I end up liking one of these other players that's th round three to four, we are not gonna be able to take everybody in rounds three to four. So we do need some day three options. So I'm gonna go Ridley. 
Theo Judge, and then I think on defense, we are going to go for DeMarco Ross and see if he's worth something later on as well. So those are the three we're going to do now. All right, now let's take a look and see where these guys are ranking. So first is Theo Judge. Not a top talent, but rounds two to three and rounds three to four is definitely not something to slouch at. At tight end. Okay, so Rat Ridley is not as good as I thought he was going to be. And now down to Ross. Okay, so he's just day three. So he is on par with where he should be. Wouldn't be a bad choice for us in day three to bring in some extra potential pass rushers. Um, so, yeah, didn't find any amazing talent, but we do have a lot of information on some big areas like corners, wide receivers. Um, I feel like we do have a lot of information on quarterbacks. We're already set. We, we already know. Boyd is going to be the quarterback, all right? Like, there's no speculation here, all right? This isn't the NFL. We're not going to pretend like... That's not the case. And now let's take a look at the mock draft here, the last one. And yes, they have us taking Deion Boyd. I would do the same. My question is, does Battle make it out of the first round? That's what I'm curious about. I don't think he does. Let's just go. We're at 15. Oh, no. Callaway. Okay, so Callaway is going to be gone pretty early from the, from the mock draft. Um, He's got to go, right? Yep, okay, they have him going 30th. So we'd have to move into the 30th position to, to top the Bills to be able to get Tremont Battle. And I'm not going to lie, guys. If if I have a shot to try, oh, I'm going to try. Right? That's not that's not even a question about it. I just don't know if I'll be able to, so I'm not getting my hopes up. And we have fallback options, so it's not something I want to force and ruin the future for this team. It's draft time. Draft. There we go, baby. Let's get it started. And we are going to kick things off with a pretty big bang, because you guys already know, we are about to take Deion Boyd. We know he's a top five selection, and we are gonna make him the next quarterback of the Carolina Panthers. 6'4", 225, he's just 21 years old. All the A's in the world. Let's see what we got in Boyd. And he was the number one pick. Number one true value, number one pick. Can make every throw, elite intermediate accuracy, processes the defense quickly. And let's see, 98 throw power, 84 speed, 86 excel, 83 change of direction. This is going to be, I hope, a very, very good pickup for us. Deion Boyd, first selection of the Panthers franchise. All right, so we are at pick 30. I'm gonna try and see if we can swing a trade with the Bills, but I I just don't know if we're gonna have it in us to get it done. Let's see what they're asking for. Okay, this is what I'm thinking. We give up our pick coming up here soon, right? So 13 picks from now. We also give up a second round pick two years from now, and then a fifth rounder this next year, and then a fourth rounder two years from now. I mean, that's quality, like, that's that's a good package for moving back 13 spots, right? In my opinion. I'm going to offer it and see what they say. And they accepted. Guys, we're about to get Battle, the corner. Here we go. We already know who we want. We want Tremont Battle, the 6'4", top five talented corner to go along with JC Horn and help turn this team around. There's, there's not a better way we could open up this franchise than bringing in two cornerstone players like this. Traymond Battle, welcome to Carolina. He was a number three ranked player in the draft. Another excellent pick. Elite speed consistently shows high level instincts. Sticky man cover corner. He has got 95 speed and 94 acceleration. Hidden development, 96 change of direction. Oh my God, this was a tremendous pick. All right, we are at our next pick here, round two, pick 14. Let's go and see who is available on our board. Okay, so Duran Overton is still available. The wide receiver is still available. I feel like we have to take him, right? That makes the most sense. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a no brainer. We take Duran Overton. That gives us a big bodied receiver with speed to go along with our rookie quarterback. I, I, gotta, I gotta pull the trigger on this. 
This draft has been insane. I don't even care that he can't run deep routes. Garan Overton, Carolina Panthers. We're going to rebuild this whole offense. This whole, they're, we're going to rebuild this whole identity. Oh, we got a little sh shot of the war room. He's at home, putting his hat on. Okay. He is a B minus. So we got him at rank number 45 player, and he is pick number 46. So we right in line. Soft hands, strong hands, make contact. Soft hands, strong hands, make contested catches look easy. Easily separates on short routes. And we got another hidden dev, guys. 93 speed, 89 excel. That is good for a guy who is 6'5 and over 220. I will take that any day of the week. Oh, man. I Right now, I am so excited about this draft. All right, next pick. Round three, pick one. Let's see what we have available at this point in the draft. Okay, so this is where we have some luxury because I sort of anticipated us having to use a pick around here on somebody on like a different position. So now we sort of have some, some wiggle room here. Let's try and find out if there's a better option up here at tight end. We know Ahmad Hilton is here. He's rounds three to four. We do have a fourth round pick, so that is going to be coming. The question is, is he worth the pick right now? That's that's what we're trying to figure out. Jacquez Green is still here. He was the top guy that we were looking at before. A to C play awareness, B to D play rec. What do we have for... Okay, so man is A, zone is A, pursuit is A. Ooh, this might be a good pick for us because let's think about it, right? We have... We have Thompson, but how long is he going to be viable for? Right? How long is he going to be at playing at a high level? 6'2", 225. He's really fast. Elite speed, elite acceleration, elite change of direction. And we know he can cover. And Jacquez Green is looking really good right now. Um, I don't... Ooh, wait, wait. Hold up. Jose Middlebrooks. Two A's. A-A. What about his coverage? Okay, so he can't cover as well. What does his physicals look like? Solid. Okay, so he's not the fastest. He's more of your, your run stopper. So he's definitely not as good as the other dude. Part of me wants to go Jacquez Green because we know he's got all the the extras and we're not expecting him to play right away. So we can, if this ends up being on the lower side, we can work with that before he has to see action. But we know he's already has really good stuff in the zone area, the man area. I just I don't I don't like passing up these these gems where they they have elite categories and physicals, A's in very important areas, even if it's not a, an absolute need right this second. We might end up having to go to a four three soon. Screw it, we just need help. We're going Jacquez Green. I just I have a feeling I could be wrong, but that's just the feeling I'm going with here. He's 23, which is a little bit of a downfall for me, but with all the A's he has, I'm willing to take a chance on it. Oh, we're getting a walk up. What does that mean? So he was number 51 in true talent or true value. We draft him at 65. He's hidden dev as well. Okay, that is oh boy. This is this is turning into an excellent first draft. All right, I was able to find a trade partner. I simmed about halfway through the third round or I pick 82. And the Jaguars, who needed a middle linebacker, I ended up trading them a fifth and a seventh this year, along with Josie Jewell. And that got us the third round pick. We have Theo Judge, the running back, who I think is who I want to take here. We also have Ahmad Hilton, who's listed as 108. And then we also have Antonio Bassi. All three of these guys are coming up due here soon. The only thing hinging me right now on the running back is that I know his talent is above where we're picking him. Like, there's there's no question about that. I just, I know his talent. It would be stupid for me to pass it up not knowing what the talent of the other guys are and then end up picking a dud. Whereas with the t tight end, we know we have a fallback option in Ridley who has a lot of potential. Potential injury risk, but we know he's got a lot of potential. And we actually know more about him than we do about Hilton, even though I think Hilton is a little bit better. But we have a fallback option there. We do not have one at running back as of now from what I've looked at. 
and E tackle is something that I would like to get, but it's an unknown. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna take Theo Judge here, running back in the mid third round. Theo Judge ends up being the number 75th ranked player. We got him at 82. And another hit, guys, we are killing this draft. This has been insane. All right, I can't do any more trading up, so I'm just gonna have to sim to the next pick and hope that one of our players is still on the board. Okay, so the tight end did go. So Ridley is our fallback option. What about D tackle? Okay, and he went as well. So did not go our way, but we got another hidden dev player. And now I think what we are going to do is we are officially in the fourth round. I don't think there's anybody else that I'm really leaning on right now. I think that's the route we have to take right here. That's the route we're gonna go. Dalvin Ridley, tight end. We're not sure if his injury history is gonna be an issue or not, but we know that he is very skillful in a lot of areas. So we're gonna take a flyer on him here in the top of the fourth. We got another scene. Does this mean he's another hidden dev? How many hidden devs are in this draft? He was number 83. So far, I, I don't think we've picked a player bad at all. Okay, he's normal. Okay, first normal of the day. 81 speed, 84 acceleration. We don't know what his injury is though. So hopefully we find that out. Oh, his injury is an F. Oh, don't tell me this is be one of those guys that is like 40 something injury. All right, next pick, round five, pick one. This is where I think we need to start relying on the talent that we have scouted right now. We still have a guy sitting down here on day three in Antoine Mobley at wide receiver who's a round one to two talent. I don't know if that's something that we are being able to pass up. What about corner? Is there another guy here at corner? No, there's nobody at corner that is worth a pick. That is like, well, not that he's not worth a pick. We have a guy here that is a day three, a couple of them actually. Yeah, I just, I think at this point in the draft, we just gotta take what we know is going to be good. We know Mobley's got some speed. We know Mobley is gonna be a good talent later on in this draft. We have the ability to take him. I'm not going to waste any time. Let's just take him and just get it over with. Antoine Mobley ranked number 41. We got him at 129. 92 speed, 91 excel. He's normal dev. But I'm happy with that pick. All right, now we are back here in the sixth round. And I feel like this would be a good spot for us to maybe double down on corner. Since we have a couple left here that have day three grades on them. There's Demario Campbell. There's also a couple of UDFAs like DeAndre McQueen. Yeah, we're going to double down on corner here with DeAndre McQueen late in this draft. Um, he's one of the few that we have left that we know information on, so I'd rather take something I know than something I don't at this point. All right, so this is our worst pick, but he's still drafted the same spot we should have probably take to took him at. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, and then our last pick, this is where we're going to take a random flyer on somebody. I'm going to go ahead and take Mike Jackson. Defensive end, speed rusher. The only reason I'm taking him is because he has a B. <laughs> and finesse moves. That's the only reason. So let's go ahead and take him. All right, so he wasn't very good. So whatever. We took him. We got him. And um, there's the draft. All right, guys. That draft went way better than I thought it would. Now let's see what we got. Oh, boy. What a what a haul. Okay. <laughs> he got an 81 overall quarterback in Dion Boyd. 81 overall, 98 throw power, 85 throw under pressure, 79 awareness. Oh my gosh. Look at his injury rating, his stamina. I am really excited. I'm super excited for, for Boyd here. And then to follow it up, we got Tremont Battle, who is a 78 overall, 6'4", 95 speed, 94 excel. Pretty balanced with man and zone. Play rec is pretty good. His awareness is not bad either. The only downside is his toughness is an 80. But everything else, well, in his tackling is, is awesome to me. I, I'm loving this pick. And then we came back for Deron Overton. This was the wide receiver. And we didn't have... It was round one to two. So he's 73 overall. He's still hidden dev. And he's got some... I mean, outside of deep route running, he's got really good stats to start. I don't hate this at all. I think this is a good pick. Jacquez Green ended up being a 73. 
Okay, so this was the guy that we took a little bit of a flyer on. And let's see what he's got. So 76 tackle, 78 hit power, 87 speed, 90 excel, 82 pursuit, 74 zone, 78 awareness. His man needs a lot of work, but he's got maxed out almost injury stamina. Toughness is a little bit low. Overall, really solid pickup, especially for somebody that we weren't anticipating on taking. And then the next one was Theo Judge, the running back, 6'1", 228. And he is pretty balanced, I would say so. 84 trucking, 80 ball carrier vision, 91 carrying. I like that a lot. Like, I've been, I always take running backs. Dalvin Ridley, though, this was a one that surprised me a little bit. I'm very curious to see what the other tight ends overall was, and we will check that out before the end of this video. But Ridley ends up being a 73, and the moment of truth now is what? how bad is his injury? Oh, his injury is a 76. I mean, yes, that is low, but it's not as bad as I was, I was thinking. It was going to be like a, a, a 40 or something. So, 81 speed, 83 catching, 76 awareness, 84 excel. Short route is pretty good. Catching traffic is good. I like it. And then Antoine Mobley, that was the day three receiver that had the round one to two grade. He ends up being a 73 overall. And he is just pretty even across the board. His release needs a lot of work. So does his deep route running. But short routes, intermediate stuff, he is going to be helpful on right away. He does have some kick return ability as well. DeAndre McQueen was the last corner that we took. He ends up being a 68. And... Man coverage is horrendous. So McQueen is going to be a project for sure. But, I mean, it was something like, hey, it's late rounds. 68 overall is not something to scoff at. And then the last pick we made was Mike Jackson with a 62. I'm curious to see some of the other players that I was trying to go after. Let's check that out now. Terrell McGill was the other guy that we were looking at. He was a 76. And now there was Bassey. He was a 72 as well. I wonder if he's hidden Dev. He's not. He is normal as well. That would have been a pretty good player for us to have. He wouldn't have been a starter, but he would have been fighting for it right away. And then here was Ahmad Hilton. He was a 72 as well, but he was hidden development. Okay. All right. So a little bit better on the upfront stuff. I still think that we had a decent uh, pick. I mean, outside of the injury, he's got a little bit better speed though. That's for sure. Um, there are things for us to work on with with Ridley, but honestly, not a as, as outside of the the hidden development, right? That obviously you always want hidden development players, but as a consolation prize to get the running back that I wanted, I think that was a pretty good pick. I must have missed this guy because Tevin Barkley was sitting there as a 75 overall in the seventh round. I don't remember seeing this guy at all. After one off season, this is what our team is looking like. So we have Deion Boyd as our number one quarterback, of course. We have our youngsters down here in Overton and Mobley in the wings for wide receiver. Theo Judge is here. He'll be the starting power back. We have Ridley as our starting tight end right out of the gate. On defense, not a whole lot of changes after the draft because a lot of this is more for the future. Green is going to end up being a 73 overall middle linebacker. But of course, we do have Battle and Stevens is going to be our slot corner. So Battle will jump out to be our outside corner. Stevens will land in the slot, which should give us some pretty good coverage all around the field. I am really liking what we came up with here for this offseason. I think that we really changed a lot of this team around just like I said I wanted to and infuse this team with a whole different unit I'm excited to see what this team does so that is going to wrap up this video I know this is a little bit different than what I normally do but I'm like dude the Panthers are just not it I don't think I'm going to put everybody through four or five games of watching them play let's just get to the offseason let's get this team this this new franchise started and let's get things started on a, on a hot note and i think we did just that so if you like this video please hit that like button down below subscribe if you have not already and turn on that bell notification and i will see you guys next time